Hello everyone, welcome to another video. To today we'll be solving Edexcel International IGCSE 91 Chemistry Paper 1C November 2021. This is a three series question paper video. For today's series, we are going to solve from question number one to question number four in part one video. You will also get the question number five to six. 5 to 7 in a part 2 video and question number 8 to question number 11 in a part 3 video. Question number 1, A. The diagram shows the particles in four substances, A, B, C, D. Guys, in A, we can see we are looking at atoms only. These are single atoms, all right? As you can see, only single circles here. So they are representing single atom. They're monoatomic. In B, we are looking at molecules. So basically, these are similar atoms, those that are joined together, all right, uh, by sharing electron. And in part C, we are looking at compounds. And in part D, we are looking at a macromolecule, a giant structure macromolecule. We are looking at diamond. Now, the question says, which substances contain single atoms of one element? All right. So, obviously, it's the answer will be A because, you know, we can see these atoms are not joined with any other atoms. They're single atoms of one element. Which substance is a compound? So, we can see C is a compound because it contains atoms of two different elements. Two different elements can be seen and they're chemically bonded together. Part three, which substance could have the formula H2? So the formula H2 could be in this particular B. That's because they are similar atoms that are joined together by covalent bonds. Part B, the diagram shows the particles in substance E. Give two reasons why substance E is a mixture. Well, we can see that there is a, two different substances, those that are uh, unevenly distributed. So two different elements are present. Two different elements are present and they are not chemically bonded together. Question number two. This question is about group seven elements and their reactions. Fluorine has the smallest atoms in group seven. The diagram shows the electronic configuration of a fluorine atom. We are looking at fluorine. Okay, there are seven electrons in the outer shell we can see. So one more electron needed. State why fluorine has the smallest atoms in group seven. You know, if we were to look at fluorine, we can see the electronic configuration is just two and seven. So in group seven, all right, fluorine has the fewest number of, you know, shells, energy levels. So which definitely gives it the smallest uh, size. Which row gives correct number of occupied electron shells and the correct number of outer shell electrons in an atom of iodine? Use the periodic table on page two to help you. So number of occupied electron shells. Now, if we were to look at iodine, uh, iodine has a total of uh, 54 electron as per the periodic table. We can see, oh, sorry, iodine 53. Okay. So this is iodine, which is 53 electrons. So yeah, we can see there is a total of 53 uh, electrons. All right, it belongs to group seven and it belongs to period number, we can put the period number here, one, two, three, four, five. It belongs to period number five. So the number of occupied electron shells will be five. And the number of outer shell electron will be seven. So five, seven, C will be the correct answer. Part B1, the table gives description of the reactions of some group seven elements with iron wool. Complete the table by giving a description of the reactions of fluorine with iron wool. So fluorine, all right. In fluorine, we can see that it does not need any heating, reacts pretty quickly. We know fluorine is even more reactive than that. So definitely it will react even faster. So obviously it will not require any heating. First thing, does not need heating. And it will react very quickly. So 
So we came into this particular conclusion in understanding that fluorine is the most reactive in group seven and iodine is the least reactive. The next question, state the relationship between the reactivity of the group seven elements and the size of their atoms. So basically we can say as the size of the atom is increasing from fluorine to iodine, the reactivity is also decreasing. Question number three. This question is about the rusting of iron. Water is needed for iron to rust. Name one other substance needed for iron to rust. So we know that water and oxygen both are needed for iron to rust at the same time. So definitely oxygen. Give the chemical name for rust. Rust is hydrated iron three oxide. So we'll name it. So guys, this particular question about rust, because hydrated iron three oxide is called a rust. Please, it's a must that you memorize it. It is always iron three oxide. It will never be iron two oxide. So keep that in mind. Even if you forget to write hydrated, you will still get your mark. But if you for forget to write iron three oxide, then you will lose your mark. The diagram shows two methods used to prevent iron from rusting. One is iron that is coated with plastic, a barrier method, and one is iron that is coated with zinc. All right, so uh, coating with zinc will be galvanizing. Uh, method A will only work if the plastic coating is not damaged. Method B will work even when the zinc coating is damaged. Explain how method A prevents iron from rusting. So basically method A is a barrier method. So we're gonna say plastic is going to act as a barrier and therefore stops oxygen or water from getting into the iron. The question says, give the name of the method B. So basically coating a iron, a piece of iron with zinc is called galvanizing. So we'll name it galvanizing. Part three, explain how method B prevents iron from rusting even when the zinc coating is damaged. So basically zinc, when it is coated in on top of iron, zinc is more reactive than iron. It belongs in the higher reactivity series than iron. So therefore, what it does is that it oxidizes itself. It corrodes itself in preference to the iron. Question number four. The table shows the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in species F, G, H. Species F, number of protons, seven. Species G, number of protons, seven. Species H, number of protons, eight, uh, seven. Okay. So they basically, we can say uh, that uh, these two are isotopes of each other. And species H, having 10 electrons, more than the number of protons, definitely is... Uh, 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 you know, it's an ion. So species H is an ion. However, these two are isotopes. Give the mass number of F. So F has, uh, you know, it is the neutron plus proton number that gives the mass number. So F has seven plus seven, which is equals to 14. Give the electronic configuration of G. Since there is seven electron in the in total, so electron configuration will be two five, similar to that of nitrogen. Explain why F and G are isotopes of the same element to refer to subatomic particles in your answer. All right, yeah, we can see that they both have the same number of protons. However, they have different number of neutrons, which makes them isotope of each other.
Part 4. Explain why H is a negative ion. Refer to subatomic particles and their changes and their charges in your answer. So basically, in the H, if we look at species H, we can see there are three more electrons than the number of protons. So there are three more electrons. So the electrons have negative charge and protons have positive charge. And when they cancel out each other, we can get that minus three charge, the negative ion charge. Part B, a sample of carbon contains atoms of mass number 12 and 13. The table shows the percentage of these atoms in the sample. So mass number 12, 90.930, 98.930, and 13, 1.070. Calculate the relative atomic mass air of the sample of carbon. Give your answer to two decimal places. So in order to calculate AR from percentage abundance of each isotope, so we're going to write AR of carbon, which is equals to, we will multiply the percentage abundance of each isotope with their mass number. And then we'll divide it by 100. We'll divide only by 100 if the percentage abundance adds up to 100, by the way. Keep that in mind. So once we do the division, our answer comes 12.01. So relative atomic mass is 12.01 for carbon. So guys, that's all for today's video. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and uh, stay connected with us. All right, if you have any question paper in mind that you want us to solve early, let us know in, our, in the comments. And thank you for watching the video. See you in the part two and part three video. Bye-bye.